and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Sivir Taric. Been a little while since we've played a Taric deck, and y'all know that I really like playing Taric decks. So I'm looking forward to this one. We got a new champion to pair Taric with. A champion on the same point of the curve there with the four mana, um, which isn't always ideal. Um, but I think that I think this should still be okay. So Taric, or so, sorry, so Sivir is going to have Quick Attack and a Spell Shield. Uh, both of those are really awesome, and it's going to be a great card to support with Taric. That if we can copy over a spell to copy over to the Sivir and also give the Sivir tough, even better. Um, when we do have a leveled up Sivir, it says when I'm attacking, attacking allies have my keywords. And so what we want is we want that Sivir to have a good amount of keywords. Now, of course, the Taric can give the Sivir tough, and especially if you have. Um, you know, your leveled up Terry, that's even better, but you know, it can give the, the, the Sivir tough, but let's give it some more keywords besides that. How about Overwhelm? We got Zenith Blade. Zenith Blade works perfectly with both of our champions. We can either, you know, copy it over with Taric, or, you know, we can give it to Sivir, so we can give it Overwhelm there. And then we also have Inner Sanctum in here. This card is pretty awesome with Sivir, being able to create two lucky finds, and each lucky find can give, um, you know, we can pick a buff to give um, our cards, we can, you know, give Sivir a couple of keywords from that. Besides that, we're going to be kind of like, so basically we're going to be a curve out deck that has um, a good amount of combat tricks. We got Shapestone and Pill Cascade for our combat tricks as far as our, you know, so this may just be plus one, plus one, but it can be plus three, plus one if we get a landmark. For our landmarks, we got the Rock Hopper and the Inner Sanctum and then one Ancient Preparations for an extra one drop. We're going to have gems. We're going to have Mentor of the Stones and Mountain Goat making some gems for us. Those will be nice with, with the Taric. We'll have Xenotype Researchers being our other three drop that will hopefully give some allies plus three plus three if we get lucky there. And then another really big Overwhelm Spell Shield threat at the top end. Another great card to uh, buff up with like your Mentor of the Stones or anything like that. So should be a fun one to play. Let's go ahead and get to it. So Sivir Taric. Ooh, Lissandra Trundle. So I have two Bastions. I don't have any of like the um, this Shurima Deny card. We got two Bastions for protecting stuff. I I think I'm gonna just keep Bastion because of how you know it's it's just so good against Vengeance and Ruination and that kind of stuff. But let's get rid of all those. We do also, of course, have Sivir and the Ruin Runner having Spell Shield. That's also really that's really important, of course. But we want it to curve out a little better than this. Okay. So we want to curve out and have our champions. Rock Hopper and Mentor the Stones both have one health. Not ideal. Against the Lissandra Trundle deck. I'm going to pass. Okay, they're taking the pass, so they waste a couple more mana than we do. Enter, traveler, and stop staring. And stop staring. Yep, 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 yep. Mountain goat. Sand and trouble far as the eye can see. You don't think this deck plays ruination? Really? I'd be very surprised if they do not have ruination. Like just like one copy. Getting Tarek in play first before we start playing these gems. So we can start leveling up this Tarek.
Okay. So two, three, four, five, six. It's like I'm not leveling up Tarek right now. Never ends. Never submit. Six. So close. Secrets hidden by frost. Okay. I was wondering how that would work. I... I was wondering if that would take out the spell shield or not. Let me just pass. Fading memories. I don't think I never really thought of that before, but fading memories with ice pillar. For turning on Watcher, that that does sound pretty sweet. Huh. Well, I guess we lose. All right, five still. That's a lot of damage to deal. Chase what you want without mercy. I mean, we don't win. I mean, I still I gotta do six damage to them because their nexus is, has five on it. So like, I can stay alive this turn. Yes, that doesn't mean that I win. Okay. I can't stay alive from just the damage, obviously. Okay. Got some Nightfall going on here. Diana Nocturne. We're getting rid of that, and I'm getting rid of one of these. Let's get rid of Shapestone. Okay. We'll keep Pale Cascade. I'll play the Dune Keeper. If it's made of sand, I can write it. Sand and blood. You leave me no recourse. Not the best Dune Keeper ever. I mean, the, the point of playing the Dune Keeper is because I was going to be curving out anyway. And it would just get that in play. Mother Moon Veil. Interesting reaction. I'll make a note. Ill met by moonlight. Gross. Whatever the cost. I will be heard. Diana's so good. If y'all watched me play the Nightfall deck the other day. Y'all know that I think that Diana is the most underrated champion in the game. I have very, um, very high, I hold this card to very high regard. Yeah, opponent's hand pretty good. Yeah, looking looking real rough. Looking real rough. That car can help. I wish I wish Inner Sanctum like like these lucky finds. I wish you could get like any keyword on these. I guess they thought that elusive and life steal would be too good, but there's no elusive, no life steal. Try 
to blind me with resplendence, but they could not break me. Man is amazing. Oh, no challenger, okay. Excuse us. Out of my way. So I wanna play the I wanna play the inner sanctum right now so that like next turn we get the lucky find so I can play the ruin, ruin runner and the lucky finds on it immediately. Chase what you want without mercy. Night flowers upon you. The promise of a new moon upon you, Bloom Tender. Alright, what do we got? Quick attack, not bad. Challenger, not bad. What's the other one? Plus zero, plus two. I think we're gonna do the challenger to try to challenge the Diana. But that quick, but then you know, like if they do have like some nightfall cards, this Diana turns into like five three. But I guess we kind of need to kill that Diana. I, I really want challenger and quick attack. Can I? Can I just like? Can I just choose both of those? Uh, maybe it's just the quick attack first. So I can I can kill these already. I can challenge those things already. Because if I if I yeah, so if I had to choose one of those, it'd be that. And then tough, plus two plus zero oh, or plus one plus one. Eleven, twelve, not the plus two plus zero. Definitely one of the other two. We'll do tough. I mean, I feel like I can probably kill them next turn anyway with this kind of stuff, but maybe maybe I need the plus two plus zero. Ugh, stop. Does that get rid of spell shield? I guess it probably does. No, that, that gets through the spell shield, doesn't it? Alright, good blocker. Oh. Right, vulnerable. Their sense travels on the night air. Yeah, good champions. Diana Nocturne, awesome. They had their awesome champions. I did not have any champions. Good game. I mean, I guess I might as well see what we draw for one mana. I don't. I don't have anything. I don't have like a brittle seal or anything. <laughs> hey, that's a one mana card. It depends on what you... It, the question is, is Nocturne or Aphelios better in Nightfall? And it depends on really how you build your deck. If you build it to play a longer game or a really aggressive game. Fjordshen. Um. Try again. Okay, we got a champion. Got a Taric. Not been drawing our champions too well. The Emperor commands the land obey. I am one with the land. Always forward. My life for these lands. So yeah, Pill Cascade would kill that thing, but I Right now, Pill Cascade's my only thing to go along with the Taric. You're covered. Nature blesses her followers. It's rude. If it's made of sand, I can ride it. Protect and strike. Clarity. 
they do have like repost and that kind of stuff. You know, at least like we're drawing two cards here, right? Like I, I want to just make sure that we're drawing two cards. Okay. That was the reason to play the researchers first. Gift from the river folk. What do you make of that? I'm not sure. Yeah, we're not very good against repost. We are pretty weak against repost. Maybe we need to have a hush in here. Would you look at this place? See what we see. Is it me? I'm not giving them the free kill with the sand soldier, obviously, and I, I don't want I don't want like the Fiora to get like the free kill on either of these. Such unrefined style. Repose is really the card I just can't deal with. Oh I, can't, I, yeah, I can't deal with Repose. What form will the waters take? Our sun rises. So turning the Xenotype researchers into being four power. Fiora and Cythria, but we are kind of out of cards. Sands beneath me and winds behind me. The water changes. What a shame for you! Gonna catch the sky. Free repose? Come on. Targon. Please don't have tons of repose. Yeah, just don't. Please don't have tons of repose. I can't. I can't beat that card. Please don't. Yeah, River Shaper is amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, River Shaper is a great card. Um, but then you know, repose, and then you know, they, last last game they had Fiora, Fiora Champion spell repose, and a couple other regular repose. Um, okay, we got a champion. We've done a very poor job of drawing our champions, also. The last two games combined, we had one total champion. And, obviously, with our curve-out deck, our champions are very important. If it's made of sand, I can ride it. Sand and blood! My life for these lands! Oh, dear! Okay. Yeah, I think we need we probably need a hush. Yep. That's That's probably fair. I'm not sure. Like especially if we're if we're planning on playing against Fiora Shen a bunch, we I mean we need a lot of hushes, right? Like but yeah, hush would seem to make a lot of sense. Heroes I walk the space between 
waters are still. If they kept all their mana open, I would have attacked and you had my two two one challenge the river shaper. Water changes, but never breaks. So I go. I guess I'm going ancient preparations. That card's pretty awesome. <clears throat> hmm. Would have liked to find Challenger. I just can't do anything, can I? See what we see. So... Not Overwhelm. Hmm. I think that keeping Sivir alive is more important than doing a little bit of, like, a small amount of damage to them. Found out I'm really, really poorly positioned against Barrier. Strike, we will reform. We swim within the flows of magic. Not Challenger, unfortunately, but I have this Ruthless Predator. Enforced equilibrium. Right on! Engulf them. Sweep them away. The balance has been maintained. Here's your cut. So they have sharp sight. That turns into seven, six. That's all. It's me going to eleven. How close are you to leveling up? Twenty-one. And I'll be nine, so thirty. The pill cascade on one of these would not level up Sivir. Make it worth my while. So the vulnerable is only this round. I, you know, I mean, I, I need these things still alive. I can't, I can't throw like away a 2-1. I need the bodies. Just can't kill them. Business as usual. Always forward. Um, basically, what my plan here is whichever one they don't block, I bastion. Okay, I thought I thought those should gain this the spell shield and everything afterwards. Okay, well.
I mean, my deck is so bad against barriers. Okay, before we go go to game five, um, we've noticed that we we have to have like a hush or quicksand, like that kind of cards, right? So we're gonna we're gonna play one of each. I am getting rid of uh, one shape stone and the ancient preparations, which is pretty slow. Putting the two two into play after three turns, we're gonna go ahead and get rid of those two cards, and we're gonna try um, you know one of each of these because we're just too bad against barrier. We have to have some kind of answers or you know like you know something against barrier. And so that's what we're going to have here with the Hush and the Quicksand. Let's give that a try. Okay. So unfortunately our opponent's going to be playing a lot of Hush. That's going to be... Hush is a good card against us. Um, but we do have Spell Shield. Spell Shield is going to be very handy in this matchup. All right. Thank you, Talamari. Osu can sniff out any star anywhere. pass i know we could like attack and try the plus three plus one to try to kill the soraka but if they just have any of like the two mana protection which there are plenty of that'd be a bad idea for us i will find the goodness in you river king Hope only provides temporary sustenance child this doggo over here is snoring look at that <laughs> she's laying there their head next to the pillow just snoring up a storm Get that plus one plus one against these six health things. Already has quick attack. Let's go overwhelm. Where there's a will, there's a meal. There's a meal. So, like, these Acquire Taste are really nice, just it like, they should probably just be targeting my Spell Shield stuff anyway. Like, you know, just use, basically, it's two mana, get rid of Spell Shield. Right, like, that's still just a really nice card. So I'm glad it's Pale Cascade and not Astral Protection. Pretty glad about that. And so getting getting Tom Kench out of here so they can't just get the acquired taste to pop my spell shields. So 15, then this is 12. I'm thinking about just letting that happen. Then you have this Ruthless Predator for the next turn. Yeah. Sand and trouble far as the eye can see. The Star Child, I'll clear a path for you. Good to see you too, Vin. You think you saw quicksand removing barriers? Yes, quicksand should remove barriers. Because barrier is a keyword, so yes, it should remove barriers. So 
So where are you at? 27, so I need to do 8. Still have five mana left. All right, so four, nine, okay. Because basically, astral protection will make this Soraka ten health. So to kill to kill Soraka through astral protection, because it's astral protection, it has one right now. Astral protection gives eight, and right doesn't it give eight. Yeah, so I think it gives 8, and then it, it will level up, because it will be healed, so it will give another one, so it will be 10. Okay, they may just have a different Soraka in hand. Starspring. I'll protect you. No, they do have a different Soraka in hand. It's bad news. Spectacular. And this, you know, through an astral protection, I, you know, I need to be able to do an extra four. Live with purpose. Don't touch my flock. Please don't hurt them. You know, it, even though, like if this thing survives at one, it could still die to the round start. So much card draw. Yeah, they were holding the astral protection. That is what they were holding. Another path, another drop. That does keep them. If if that one of these two cards was the third Soraka, that that keeps them from being able to do the heal all. So that's very good. Oh, I guess this one won't die. 
At least that one will die. 13. Yeah, we got a couple gems. We got a couple gems. Let's go, Osu. I am not blocking with something and letting them heal it. I will just take the damage. Come on, really? The two cards in hand are two hushes? Really? Don't touch my flock. Those are the two cards in hand. Another obstacle. Don't touch my flock. Another obstacle. So I can save one of these two, and I guess I save this this one. <laughs> no, I just used all my gems. Wow. What do you make of that? I'm not sure. We're still looking okay. They have no cards left in hand. So we're looking okay. Out here, you're moving or you're dead. Or you're dead. Okay. Got there. That's what our deck's supposed to do with like the leveled up Sivir and doing a bunch of cool stuff with the Sivir and our, our combat tricks with the Sivir. I, I don't think this deck was too bad. I think that, you know, we ran into some tough matchups. Two Fiora Shen decks with a barrier was really rough. We had another one where we didn't draw a champion at all. Like that's three of our losses right there. It was one game where we just didn't draw a champion and then the, then two games against Fiora Shen with like the, with the different barrier cards. Um, you know, I, I, I do think that, like, the Hush and the Quicksand was necessary. So, you know, we have those in here moving forward. Um, but I, I don't think this deck would, was too bad. Like, I, I would be pretty confident in going 3-2 and two with this deck if we just ran it right back. Like, and just ran it back here with the Hush and the Quicksand. I would be pretty confident in going 3-2. and two. Um, So, yeah, we had we had two real bad matchups. We had... Because, like, our four losses, right? So the, there's two Fior Shens. Which was a, especially with me not having Hush or Quicksand, it was really rough going getting through barriers because the barriers were really good against our quick attack and stuff. We had one where it was the one one where like we didn't draw Sivir, didn't draw Taric. It was the aggro deck. My opponent, you know, it was the Elise Azir aggro deck, which is really good. My opponent had multiple Elises and and you know had a real good hand and stuff. And you know that hap you know that's a real real fast aggro deck that happens. And then our other one was like the Watcher combo deck, where um, you know, they just, you know, went crazy, you know, turn eight with a crazy combo kill with playing, um, you know, what, three watchers, like they played three watchers on turn eight, you know, and, and just went like super crazy. And then, you know, it is a, a Shadow Isles Freljord deck and they had, you know, good sweepers and removal and, you know, stuff like that. Um, you know, I shard killing a couple like three, one and one, one, you know, like our, our hand was rock hopper mention the stones those die die shards and so you know was, we had it we had to have a slower hand anyway and then turn eight they just come you know just combo killed us you know like if we needed one more attack so uh you know all four of those losses are completely understandable and like they're things that don't happen that often 
of you know having like a crazy combo kill or play against a deck where you don't draw any of your champions or you know just playing against Fior Shen, which was a, a bad matchup. And uh, one Fior Shen will be will be a better matchup once we have a hush and a quicksand. Like that's going to make that a better matchup. Um, and uh, so yeah, so I, I would be pretty confident in going three and two or four and one again if we just ran it right back, honestly. But we went one and four, and that's why that's why again, like whenever you go through these decks, if if you just look at the records, sometimes they you know they just look at the records. You know, it doesn't tell the whole story of some of these decks. Like our first deck, one and four, had some real problems, and you know we had you know, like with the the curve and everything, you can see like okay, like that that deck needs it an overhaul, okay, and that's that's okay. Like we we try out all sorts of different decks here. Not every deck's going to be perfect. So like our first one, yeah, that deck needed an overhaul. This one though, yes, we went one and four, but I would be you know really confident in going three and two or four and one if we would just run it right back and try it again. Like this this one. Um, you know, definitely had a lot of good stuff going for it. We just had some, you know, we just had unfortunate things happen for four games in a row. And and that's when you're looking at small samples, that's going to happen sometimes. Um, but there we go. So that's Sivir Tarek. Um, yeah, some good stuff here. The the thing that I was really sad about is that we didn't ever get to have Sivir and Tarek in play at the same time, right? Like we either had no champions or we had a Tarek or we had a Sivir, right? We never had both champions in any game just never you know never drew both of our champions which is something that as you you know you play legends of runeterra most games you have both both of your champions <laughs> but this game you know we just never had them both see we never got to like play a spell on a Terek and copy it onto a sivir so that's pretty sad just you know just never drew both champions in any game that's probably why we didn't do too good um but yeah i you know try this out with the hush with the quicksand um and uh, if you if you like Tarek decks if you like sivir decks um i know my record wasn't the best but i would be yeah i think this is a good deck to, to try out and i think this can be a good deck to play if you like these kind of support decks all right but anyway those of y'all watching later on youtube hit that like button over there and as always uh leave those comments let me know what you think and please give it a try. You know, leave, leave those comments. Let me know how it goes for you. I could really, I would really like some feedback on this deck, especially since we didn't get to really show it off and we had some tough matchups and everything. Um, yeah, I would like to hear, I'd like to hear y'all try it out yourself and, um, you know, let me know how it goes for you and hopefully it goes well. And, uh, that'll make my day if I get some positive feedback on the deck. All right. But anyway, that's it here for Sivir Tarek. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for the next video.